Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for May 16th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Migration ended up being pretty low last night and Kim and I weren't quite sure where to go, so we ended up going to Beatty Point. It was a bit foggy, but the winds were calm and it was fairly birdy, so we had a really nice walk. We had a total of 60 species, including hearing our first alder flycatchers of the season. Afterwards, we did a quick run through the firehouse woods. We had 28 species, including a blue-winged warbler. Afterwards, we lingered at the church trail parking lot as we talked to some friends, and we had this Swainson's thrush perch up really nicely for us. One of the things you want to watch for on Swainson's thrush is just the overall facial pattern where they have an eye ring, and they also have pale spectacles, just this pale area here in front of the eyes. We got over to Braddock Bay Park around 9 a.m., but it was completely fogged in, so I ended up just sitting in the car and reading for a few hours. By around 11.15, the fog was starting to lift, and with the northeasterly winds, I decided to head into Frisbee Hill, and relatively quickly it started to clear up from being foggy to being mostly cloudy, and then as the day went on, it became more and more sunny, and by the end of the day, it was almost completely blue skies, at least overhead. The winds stayed out of the northeast the whole day, light to moderate, but we really held on to a pretty good flight line. Here's one of the main things that we're seeing right now. This is a juvenile broad-winged hawk, so one that would have been born last summer. Overall, we see that it's that typical buteo shape, but it only has four feathers making up the wingtip, so it looks a little more of a pointed wingtip compared to something like a red-tailed hawk. We also don't see a belly band or dark patagial bars like we see on the red tails. Overall, these juvenile broadwings look kind of pale. The tails look relatively pale with some narrow banding. And if you look at the inner primary feathers, a lot of the juvenile broadwings are currently molting these feathers. So on this individual, you can see that it's already replaced these two feathers here that have the darker trailing edge and also on this wing as well. So those are the first adult feathers that it's growing in. Compare that to this bird, which is a red-tailed hawk, where we see that belly band and we see the dark patagial bars here in the shoulder area. Now on this one, we do see a dark trailing edge and a red tail. So this is an adult red-tailed hawk, probably one of the local nesting ones. Most of the red tails that we're seeing migrating this time of the season are juveniles. There were a few Baltimore Orioles around to entertain us while we stood there at the top of the hill. Around 1.30, I was by myself and just picking through a line of broad-winged hawks that was gliding by back towards the parking lot area, and one bird caught my eye because it had longer, more pointed wings. And here's some photos of it as it started to soar. Overall, again, we see a bird that has very long wings with somewhat pointed wingtips, overall gray underneath on the body and the head, and we see some banding to the tail. This is a subadult Mississippi kite. And let me explain what I mean when I say subadult. So this is a bird that would have been born last year. And that first summer and into the fall, they have the banding on the tail, but they also have a lot of streaking to the underside of the body. However, when you get into the spring like this, they have replaced those feathers on the underside of the body. So it's just completely gray, similar to the adults, but they still maintain the same wing feathers and that banded tail. And here's a top side view of the same Mississippi kite. And you may remember that we had one a few weeks ago. So this is actually our second Mississippi kite of the season, which is a bit unusual. Usually we only get one and we're lucky if we even get that one. There's some years that we don't get any at all. These are more of a southeastern U.S. species, but it seems like every year there's ones that wander a little too far north, and actually they seem to be expanding their range more with uh, a few pairs starting to nest into New England. Here we have a large buteo with a belly band and dark patagio bars, so this is a red-tailed hawk, and this is typical of the red tails that we're seeing migrate right now. This is a juvenile, so notice that it does not have the dark trailing edge to the wings, and it doesn't have that red tail yet. And we can see that it's molting. It's also uh, replacing some of these inner primary feathers, just like we saw on that juvenile broadwing. As I was scanning around the sky looking for hawks, I kept seeing great blue herons flying around. Maybe only three or four total for the day, but just an interesting thing to see. Here's another juvenile broadwinged hawk. This one's in a glide posture, so the tail is completely folded closed, making it look a little bit darker just because of the feathers overlapping. But you can see how pale the wings are. 
And again, we can see some molt here in the inner primary feathers. And here's a side angle of another juvenile broad-winged hawk, and the head on this one seems rather pale compared to most. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking a small falcon. We see that string of pearls to the trailing edge of the wings. We see a lot of orange here to the upper breast and also an orange tail. This is a male American kestrel. I saw my first monarch butterfly of the spring today. Here's a yellow warbler that was perched up in a tree singing. And here's one last look at a juvenile broad-winged hawk showing similar molt to the other ones we already looked at. From Frisbee Hill, I had a total of 45 species. I had a total of 84 species today, which wasn't bad considering I never had a chance to bird the bay since it was foggy the whole time I was at Braddock Bay Park. The only new species for the season today was alder flycatcher. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 243 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 22 bald eagles, 1 northern harrier, 1 sharp-shinned hawk, 231 broad-winged hawks, 7 red-tailed hawks, 1 American kestrel, 2 merlins, and 1 Mississippi kite for a total of 511 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 11,467 and the season total to 64,070. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, we're looking at showers early, becoming a steady rain later in the day with thunder possible, a high in the low 70s, and light east-southeast winds, chance of rain 80%. So if there's any chance of migration, it will be in the morning. It looks like it's going to be cloudy, maybe a chance of showers early but uh, not very strong wind, so I don't know. I wouldn't expect too much. If there's a little bit of sunshine, maybe we'll get some migration, but it seems like that rain's going to be moving in and shutting the flight down, so I would only expect light migration. But again, if anything happens, it's going to be early on. For Saturday, it's looking mostly cloudy with a slight chance of a rain shower and a high in the upper 60s. Light easterly winds would expect light to moderate migration. And for Sunday, we're looking at a mix of sun and clouds with a high in the upper 60s, winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour, but expect light to moderate migration. All right, another great day of birding. With the songbird migration being low overnight, it gave us a chance to explore a different place than we normally go, BD Point, where we had a great time. Getting over to the Hawk Watch, it was like two different days completely. You had the first few hours where it was completely foggy and nothing happening. And then as soon as it cleared up, it seemed like a whole different day, becoming mostly sunny by the afternoon and a really good hawk flight this time of year, getting all those turkey vultures and broad wings and bald eagles. And Mississippi kite was another nice surprise. Always nice to get one in a season. And this is the first time I've had two in a season, an adult and now a sub-adult. So that was really cool to see as well. I hope you're able to get out birding soon, and I hope to see you in the field or up on the platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.